So why is it that Indian immigrants from India, the country, and the ethnic group of Indians in America are crushing every other ethnic group in America, not by 5%, not by 10%, by 20% in income? We have stats on their divorce rates against everybody else. We have stats on how they raise their kids. We have stats on how they put their kids in certain majors over other majors. It's just mind-boggling, and everybody else is going to learn a ton about how Indians raise their kids. All right, so if you get value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. Income is one of the ways to measure who's more successful than others, okay? This is according to the U.S. Census Bureau where Indian Americans rank amongst other ethnic groups. If you look at this chart here, this is 2018, Indians all the way at the top at $120,000 income. Taiwanese is number two. They're ahead of them by nearly 25%, 24%. Chinese third, Japanese fourth, and it's Pakistani, Filipino, Indonesian, Korean, Cambodian, Hmong, and then Vietnamese and look where white Americans are at $65,000. Indians make $55 more thousand dollars per year than white Americans. By the way, white Americans, you're trying to go to four days a week work week. Try convincing an immigrant coming from India, Taiwan, China, Japan, Pakistan, Filipino, Indonesian, Korean, Cambodian, Persian, Hmong, Vietnamese, try to convince them to only work four days a week. Not their kids who are born here maybe, and they've been Americanized, try convincing an immigrant to only work four days a week. They will laugh at you. The whole purpose of coming to America is that they can work as much as they want. It's called free enterprise. But let's kind of take a deep dive with some of these other stats. Indian population living in poverty amongst percentage-wise with Americans. All Americans, roughly 13% of Americans live in poverty. All Asians, it's 10%. Look at Indians. Only 6 percent of all Indians in America live in poverty. Now, let's look at education. What percentage of them have bachelor's degrees? What percentage of them have, percentage of them have master's or MBAs? And what degrees they have? Look at this year. In 2021, 80 percent of Indian immigrants over 25 years old or older reported having at least a bachelor's degree versus only a third of all foreign-born and U.S.-born adults. Again, <laughs> 80% versus 33%. 80% of 25 and older have a degree, four-year degree. 49% of Indian immigrants adults have at least a graduate or professional degree in 2021 compared to 15% of foreign-born and 13% of U.S.-born. Nearly four times of U.S. born is what they have. Now, what do they major in? Let's kind of go a little bit deeper into that one. Lots of people waste money on degrees that have no amount of high paying jobs. Most people agree that you plan on going to college, you need to major in STEM to make it a good investment, but Indian Americans abide by this. It's like a religion, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Look at the chart here on what they major in. At the top, you see the blue, engineering 36%. Then it's math and computer science 35%. Then that 10% at the top, you see it? business management. So they're intentional about what areas they're gonna go major in. Now let's go even a little bit deeper than this on how they measure amongst other ethnic groups. This is according to the US Census Bureau. If you look at the top right, you'll see all immigrants, it's a darker blue. You'll see Indian immig immigrants, it's a lighter blue. And then you'll see US born, okay? Furthest to the left is management, business, science, art, occupations. Look who's in the middle, 79% of Indian immigrants versus 43% of US born versus 37% of all immigrants. They major in management, business, and science. Look at service occupation, they're the lowest by at 5%. US is 15% and all the other immigrants 21%. They're like, no, you're not gonna major in service when you're going into this. Look at sales and office occupation, 10%, 15%, 21%. National resource constitution maintenance occupation, they're 1%. It's almost as if if you do go and major in that, you're gonna get a lot of pop off from your parents there, but it's a 1%, 8% for US born, 12%. From all immigrants, then production, transportation, and material moving, 6, 13, 15. Look, they're not interested in that. You know what they're interested in? Management, business, science is what they're interested in. They wanna do STEM. So obviously this leads to them making a lot of money, but let's look at business. Are they startup entrepreneurs? Do they, do they produce billionaires? I don't know, let's take a look. So here's what it looks like. According to Oxford Academic, Indian immigrants represent 1% of the US population, but 8% of the founders of high tech companies and one third of technology startups in Silicon Valley. 1% of total US population, 8% of all founders. Here's some of the names of billionaires that produce. Jay Chaudhry, 
Chain, Net Worth $8.3 billion, CEO of Zscaler, Vinod Khosla, Net Worth $5.3 billion, former Sun Microsystem co-founder, Rome Wadwani, $5.1 billion, Rakesh Ganwal, $4 billion, Indigo CEO, founder, Nareej Shah, CEO of Wafer, $2.8 billion, Anil Bursi, Net Worth $2.3 billion, CEO of Workday. This is working on how they're producing and what they're majoring in. Now let's look at family perspective. What do they do that's different when it comes down to the family? Well, one thing that's interesting is it's very common for multiple Indian families to share a home while building a business together and continuously expanding the business. So it's almost like the concept of delayed gratification. Hey, let's live together. Let's minimize expenses. Let's put all the money we're making back into the business rather than splurging and wasting money all over the place. A couple other things to be thinking about. When it comes down to divorce rates, did you know Indian Americans have the lowest divorce rates in America? Very interesting, right? Now, some of you are going to say, well, of course they have the lowest divorce rates in America because they have arranged marriages. They may in India, but not necessarily all in America. It does happen, but it's not as high of a number as it is in India and it's gradually going away anyways. Well, let's look at the stats here. According to National Center for Family and Marriage Research, blacks, they have the highest divorce rate, 30.8%. Hispanics are 18 and a half. Whites are 15.1. Other is 12.4. But for Indian families, you ready? There's some studies that say 1.3% and some that show 6%, but they're lower than anybody else when it comes down to this. Obviously, uh, some of it has to do with culture, ritual, all of that, but they have a lower divorce rate than others. Again, this is purely based on statistics. Couple other things. We looked at this website called IndiaParenting.com and we saw these 10 things that they do as parenting that's different than others. Some of it you may say, I had some of that with my parents or I apply some of it myself. And some of you may say, yeah, we definitely don't do that in America. Here, let me kind of go through it. Number one, they promote kinship. Indian parents make it a point for to foster relationships and association with their social and family acquaintances. They edify their children to be in social connections and also maintain healthy connections with their relatives. More so they stay as shelter beside their children till they are married off right from the children's infant ages to their marriage times, even after that, the parents support their youngsters emotionally in order to provide the much needed support. Ideal Indian parents create a social environment where the concept of family is expanded to all. So they're selling family, they're selling kinship, they're selling let's stay close, they're edifying that lifestyle and the kids are emulating whatever the parent, the leader edifies, that's what they want to do. Number two, self-sacrifice. And almost every Indian parent sacrifices their lives in some way to devote themselves in raising their kids. Indian mothers forego their dreams and passions to take care of their children. Fathers often make compromises in their careers to ensure well-being of the young ones. Interesting. Everything about life becomes about pouring into their kids and look at the types of kids that they're developed. Number three, trustworthy and friendly. Trust is one thing that Indian parents mostly possess. This factor makes them the best friend of their children, at least till their adulthood. Indian mothers become the best friends their sons, while the daughters love to confine their secrets in their fathers. What? Let me say that one more time. Indian mothers become best friends of their sons, while daughters feel comfortable sharing and confiding their secrets to their fathers? Does that sound American? Or is it like, do you know what I'm saying? Very interesting, right? When you think about the dynamic here of how this looks. Let's go to number four, quality time. Indian parents uh, amidst their busy schedule give quality time to their children. They spend great time with their wards instead of just letting them grow in their own way. They're involved. They're not letting them go and let society raise their kids. They're very much involved with their kids. Number five, nurture the talents. When it comes down to Indian parents, they're extremely good at identifying the skills and unique talents of their children. They toil hard to enhance those special gifts that their kids are blessed with. You would often find the Indian kids, teenagers, and young adults getting well acclaimed in a number of creative fields thanks to the dedicated and loving Indian parents. Number six, inquisitive. That's one quality of Indian parents that many children are annoyed about. Very interesting. However, Indian parents, being curious in nature, keep a careful watch on their kids. Instead of breaching the freedom and privacy of their children, parents stay watchful about their offspring's attitude and behavior to prevent them from venturing into any misleading paths. You know some of the things you hear parents say, Leave your kids alone. Let them do whatever they want. You know, they kind of got to go through it. Indian parents will say, you're a fool to do that when they're kids. You got to be involved so they don't go out there and do crazy things. I remember, and while I'm listening to this, some of it's reminding me, I'm thinking my mom's maybe a little bit Indian. Middle Easterns have similar tendencies, by the way. They're on these lists too. My sister went on her first date. I'm a younger brother by six years. She says, your job is to spy on her. You're going to go everywhere she goes. So I'm like, no problem. Yes, sir. You know, it's like, yes, ma'am. So me and the friends, everybody had a job. 
I'm watching from the top. He's here to take his. And then boom, they drove. Follow him. I'm, I'm a 14, 15 year old kid. We're trying to follow exactly where this guy's going. Watching everything to come back and report. Look at that concept. This kid had to do this with his sister. Some tells me Indian parents maybe do a little bit of that as well. Sisters are watching the same. You were the annoying brother, were you? I was very protective. Power to all the protective brothers out there. We need more of them out there. I'm hoping Tico and Dylan will be the same as well. I'm sure they will be. Okay, culture. Indian parents instill the fundamental culture and religious values into their children right at their childhood. India is a country that has deep rooted culture cultural values, its traditions and legacies are well maintained. Indian parents make it a point to impart the same value into their children. Don't go away from your values and principles, keep selling it to them. Number eight, religious tolerance. India is a land of diversity with multitude of ethnic races having dissimilar values and ethos. Indian parents infuse the ethics in their children that let them respect people hailing from different religions, castes, creeds, and races. Respect. So it's like, hey, you gotta respect everybody that's out there. Makes sense. Number nine, ready? This one's gonna be a little bit confusing for some of you. Judge Judgmental. Indian parents are highly judgmental that definitely helps them in keeping their children safe from negatives. This is also one of the best qualities of an Indian parent to implant the same insightful abilities in their successors. And last but not least, number 10, multitasking. Most Indians are hardworking. They are diligent when it comes down to handling their parenting tasks. The moms and dads in India do great multitasking while managing their personal and professional life. They strike a fine balance between their times and dedicate adequate time to both their children and their jobs. All right, so look, you may agree with some of the things you may not agree with some of the things but the results uh, is there it shows you the numbers what they've done and there's a lot to be learned from what they're doing here's a few different takeaways number one if your kids are going to go to school don't wing it speak to them about what things to be considered then get involved in what degrees i watch how involved tom is with his kids going and taking degrees it's amazing seeing parents that are involved and saying hey Look at this, look at that, let's research this together rather than do whatever you wanna do. Number two, superior work ethic. They don't compromise their work ethic. No one's gonna make them not work hard, including the four hour work week, business insider, Bloomberg, HuffPo type of people that are journalists who came out of Columbia, wanna convince everybody to do four day work week. Good luck doing that to the Indian community and you shouldn't let that happen to you either. Number three, they're intentional about what they're doing. They're not winking it. They're saying, hey, here's what we're doing and this is why. This is what we're doing with our kids and here's why. There is intention behind the next vision and discipline, extremely disciplined in how they're raising their kids based on some of the things that we're reading here. Next, delayed gratification is, is there and, and they're constantly teaching their kids that there's many ways to do that. You know, I can ask my kids sometimes, I'll say, hey, let me ask you a question. Would you rather have me buy you an ice cream right now, but you get no video games for four weeks? Or would you rather not have ice cream for a month? but you get four video games a month from now. They're sitting there, oh my God, I would much rather not have to do this, I'll wait versus I have this. These are ways to develop the muscle of delayed gratification by you putting them in positions where they have to make the decision themselves. Strong values and uh, they keep selling the values and principles to their kids and they don't compromise it, they're not embarrassed by it. They don't let the world or American society make them feel guilty about what they believe in and become softer and more gentle. No, this is what we stand for, kid. Here's who you are. Here's a family you're a part of. This is what we're gonna be doing. Now let's figure out your talents and help you go out there and do big things within your life and make us proud, make the family proud, but more importantly, make you an incredible net positive to society. Hey, quick shout out to Indian parents out there. I salute you, I respect you for doing what you're doing. You make the world a safer place by raising kids based on high standards and high values and principles. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Anyways, if you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And I got another video. We shot this a year ago, I wanna say in Boca, how to raise successful kids. If you've never seen it before, click here to watch the video. Take care everybody, bye-bye.